Hello everybody, my name is Jeff, and um, I guess it's take two for me. Uh, let's watch this video. Uh, titles right there. So. Shoot, hold up, I gotta do this. Okay, I think this should do it. <laughs> Sorry, yes, something on the TV thing. Okay. So I'm trying to figure out if this is gonna work. So, sorry. He's mad. Bad. Okay. Um, I didn't realize that I had my video on pause, so I'm just gonna start off from right here. Yeah. By the way, um, comment if you want subtitles on reaction videos, cause uh, <laughs> I don't know how to read, but I guess if you guys want. Uh, yes, you do. Stop it, Destry. It's a joke. God. Anyway, just comment that down below, and uh, yeah, that's all I have to say. And on with the video. Yeah, don't hug me, I'm scared. Sorry guys, I'm uh I'm trying to be kind of uh silent practically and uh great copyright. I'm trying to be kind of silent so you guys can hear the video. An aspiring singer who has both a Vivo channel for her original songs and a personal channel where she posts frequent short videos of herself. And you might think that this sounds perfectly straightforward and wonder why this would ever, ever merit a film theory instead of, say, I don't know, a third part of Doctor Who. Well, it's because the content of the videos on her personal channel are a bit more than what they appear. Sure, she might inflate and deflate a rabbit toy over and over again, or cryptically talk about what time it is, or just read the Bible straight from the beginning for a solid 49 minutes. And at first glance, you might be thinking that pop these videos are just random for the sake of being random. There are plenty of other channels on YouTube guilty of exactly that. But poppies aren't. I'm sorry, I guys, notifications. one of that poppies video, and there are a bunch of them, as well oh as all her God. <laughs> Websites and there is definitely a much more sinister narrative going on here. Poppy and the other people behind these videos, most notably their director named Titanic Sinclair. Yes, you heard me right. His name is Titanic Sinclair, like the boat, and the author of the most famous muckraking novel of all time, The Jungle. <laughs> Sinclair are using these videos to comment on what it takes to be a pop star in the modern age. And I don't mean struggling your way through the ranks from humble beginnings. I mean being churned out by a cold corporate machine and selling your soul to the Illuminati. You heard that right. That's Poppy trademarked. Illuminati confirmed. Now that might sound like That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Evidence is there. So strap in, everybody, because the road to hell oh my is being God. pastel pinks has a really catchy reggae beat that occurs in four quick phases. Phase number one. Innocent, but sexual. One of the first things you'll notice about Poppy is that she appears very young. But 
How old is she? Really, is she around 16, or maybe she's just a young-looking 20-something? It's hard to tell, and the people behind the channel are certainly interested in keeping her age a secret. As Poppy said in an interview with Racks.com, quote, I don't want people to talk about how old I am. I want to talk about what I'm making. Either way, the cruise to Poppy is in her videos. Her very first video shows her eating cotton candy. In another, she's playing He Loves Me, He Loves Me Not with a flower. Yet another shows her hula hooping in the name of her first extended play is called Bubble Bath. These choices are clearly no accident because when asked in an interview to describe her style in three words, Poppy states, Barbie, Kawaii, child. Barbie explains the pink clothes and blonde hair, and Kawaii, the Japanese concept of cuteness, exemplified by things like Hello Kitty, is also pretty obvious. One look at her music video for money and you see that Japanese aesthetic everywhere. But child is the important one because it connects her to so many young blonde pop stars that we've seen over the past 20 years. For comparison, consider Britney Spears. We're all probably somewhat familiar with 21st century Britney, the one who wore a snake to the BMAs, made out with Madonna, and shaved her head. But I'm sure that those of you who can't tell a Gen X pen from an RCL beauty can also remember late 90s Britney as well when she first hit the scene. In the video for her first major hit, Maybe One More Time, Spears' teenageness is on blatant display through her Catholic schoolgirl outfit, which of course comes with plenty of sexualization on its own. I mean, I've been invited to Catholic school dances before, and I have seen some pretty wild things at them, but those moves that Britney's doing aren't leaving any room for Jesus. In those early days, she was an undeniable sex symbol, but in interviews would outright deny it, telling Esquire in 2003 that, quote, look, if you want me to be some kind of sex thing, that's not me. Are you sure, Britney? Because she said this to a magazine that ran pictures like this of her next to the very same No. Interview. Yeah, because all the innocent girls I know are doing photo shoots topless, pulling down their panties and covering up their private parts with giant strands of pearls. <laughs> what did you think those pictures were for? It's not sexual, it's just artwork. Dear Britney, would the lyrics to your big song outright say, I'm not that innocent? Forgive people for being a little skeptical when you say that you are so innocent. That is all I'm saying. <laughs> but back to 2017. It's hard to deny that Poppy is drawing some parallels here. Just compare this still of Poppy from the video where she introduces herself to the cover of Britney Spears' first album. Poppy also expresses the same kind of aversion to sexuality as early era Britney did, albeit in subtler ways. Take a moment from the video for Poppy's biggest single, Low Life. She's seated at a table whoa. with the devil. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh my gosh, did you guys just see that? Oh, I don't want to see that. Yeah, like right around here. Watch this, watch this. Whoa. Right there. Right. Right. That. Done. We're done with the video. The video is over. Because, uh, reasons like this. Oh my gosh. It's the Illuminati symbol, only with the heart. Shouldn't be touching the computer. <laughs> okay. She's seated at a table with the devil, more on that one later, who peels a banana, puts it in his mouth, and, um, doesn't start to eat it. That, sir, is a choking hazard, Mr. C. Let's see. Really? Didn't anyone ever tell you to chew your food? Sure, we don't see anything particularly graphic going on here, but Poppy's reaction tells us pretty much everything that we need to know. Sex is not a part of Poppy or her message, but the companies that manage, publicize, and basically create God, pop that's so much copyright right there. In the words of another pop star, Pink, and her song Don't Let Me Get Me, quote, LA told me you'll be a pop star, all you have to change is everything you are. They want their stars to be sexually appealing. 
because it gets them attention and helps them sell to adults while still staying innocuous enough that parents don't find them too harmful for the younger fans. And if they're able to pull off this balancing act, that leads them to phase two dollar dollar bills. Admittedly, this is the most self-explanatory of the phases, but it's one that the creators of the Poppy Channel definitely want to acknowledge in their story. The first indication of money that we get I'm making it rain. I made five hundred dollars, in which Poppy gleefully examines and counts a stack of five one hundred dollar bills she's received. How she earned that money isn't entirely clear, though perhaps it's the result of the videotape.